amenorrhea, not having a period, could it be stress, eating, what is it, what does it mean? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and today we are talking all about FHA, functional hypothalamic amenorrhea. This can also be called hypo hypo, has a few different names. But what we're breaking into is talking about when you're not having a period, essentially because your brain is not telling your ovaries to do so. So before we dive into the specifics of this, Really quickly, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. This channel exists so that you can learn more about your body and we can share health information with more people. And you always know that I say the period is a vital sign. So if you're not having one, when is that something that needs to be evaluated? And that's what we're breaking down today. So amenorrhea is absence of a period. It can either be primary or secondary. Primary amenorrhea is you've never had a period. Secondary amenorrhea means that you had a period, at least one that you've not had a period now in more than six months. The reasons why is there's definitely some things that can cause primary amenorrhea that are different than secondary. So that's an important thing if you're going to see a doctor. If you've never ever had a period, you don't need to be embarrassed or ashamed, you need to tell us. When you think about the steps that have to happen in order to have a period, so you have to have eggs available from your ovaries. You can go into ovarian failure early. This is called premature ovarian failure or premature ovarian insufficiency or menopause. So if you're out of eggs, you're no longer going to have a period. So you have to have eggs available. I always like to think about, remember all the eggs you're ever going to have are in a vault inside your ovary. Every month you have a group of eggs that comes out of that vault and each egg grows inside a follicle. In a normal month, that alone is not going to cause you to have a period or to ovulate or to have the ability to get pregnant. Your brain has to send out FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. And this FSH is really well named because it's going to get one of those follicles to grow. And as that follicle grows, the egg's going to mature and develop and it's going to make estrogen. Now that estrogen is so important for your whole body, but it also does get the lining of the uterus to grow. Once the brain sees that the estrogen is at a high enough level, it will then send out a surge of LH. The important thing here is that the brain doesn't have visuals on the ovary. It doesn't actually know what's happening. It is relying on the hormonal signals. So the hormones made from the ovary, the estrogen, the progesterone later are telling the brain what is happening. So it relies on seeing a high level of estrogen to say, oh, we must have a mature egg. Then it sends out LH or luteinizing hormone, which is the hormone that allows that follicle to rupture the egg to be released. The egg can then be fertilized in the fallopian tube if you're trying to get pregnant. But regardless of if you're trying to get pregnant or not, that same follicle heals back up and becomes the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is well named. The corpus luteum is stimulated by luteinizing hormone or LH in pulses to make progesterone in pulses. And this is considered the luteal phase. The part where you're growing a follicle is the follicular phase. When you're not pregnant, that corpus luteum can only live about two weeks. It dies, progesterone drops, and then you're going to get a period. The uterine signal to bleed is from progesterone, but the uterine signal to grow the egg is from estrogen, and both are important components of having a period. So what we are relying in order to have shedding of the endometrium or what a period is, is that you have to have eggs available. The brain has to send out FSH to get a follicle or an egg to grow. That egg has to make enough estrogen to grow the lining. It then must ovulate so that progesterone can be produced. And then when you're not pregnant, that progesterone can drop and the lining of the uterus can then shed and you are having your menstrual bleed. So when we're looking at somebody who's not having periods or who's having amenorrhea, the different factors that can go on. So you can have Eggs not available, as we already said, premature ovarian failure. Two, you can have ovaries not responding. Brain sending out the normal signal, ovary not responding. This is generally due to PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Largely, this is because you have a high number of eggs. The brain doesn't know this and sends out its normal signal and it gets diluted. So the crosstalk is not appropriate, but the brain is functioning. It's sending off its normal signals. So that's more of an ovarian dysfunction from the ovary not responding. 
And in PCOS, there is an idea that people will only have irregular cycles, but you can 100% have PCOS and have zero periods or have amenorrhea. So that's the thing. Then you have on the brain end, hypothalamic causes. And this is really brain causes because we think about the brain, the hypothalamus is the control center. This is interpreting the signals from your whole body. And then it's telling the pituitary gland, hey, all's good. Hey, estrogen's high. Hey, progesterone's dropping. But the hypothalamus is what is controlling what is then sent out from the pituitary gland. If we can imagine the pituitary gland is more of a storage center for all of these hormones. And it doesn't just store LH and FSH, it also is storing other important hormones as well, such as TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone, prolactin. It also has ACTH, which is an adrenal gland hormone. But the take home message is that the pituitary gland has a lot of hormones that are stored inside of it. So when we think about FHA or functional hypothalamic amenorrhea, this is really of a brain origin, and it means that the brain is not sending out the signal. Therefore, there's nothing for the ovary to respond to. When we took blood work for this, the blood hormones that we check, FSH, LH, are low because the brain's not sending them. Therefore, the ovarian signal for estrogen is also low. If you are in PCOS, what generally happens is that FSH is normal, LH is normal or high if you have some of that androgen production, and estrogen level is normal or high. When you have premature ovarian failure or menopause, your FSH is very high, your LH is high, your estrogen is low. The brain is really trying hard to get the ovary to respond and there's nothing there. So we are at this area where the brain's actually not sending out the signal, therefore there's nothing to respond to. Importantly, this is not good for your health. Having low estrogen is not good for you. PCOS or chronic anovulation where you're making some estrogen is not as harmful or it has different harm. But when we're talking about this very low estrogen, this is not enough for your bones, your heart, your brain, your vagina, and it has lasting impacts. So estrogen replacement on both ends of this extremely low slash no estrogen production, ovarian failure, hypo hypo, is that we need to replace your estrogen at a minimum. So if you're not trying to get pregnant and you come to me and you don't have periods and we find out that you have hypo hypo and you tell me, I just want to heal my body naturally, I will love it, but I'm going to tell you and give you reasons why your body physiologically needs estrogen. Now, estrogen is different than the birth control pill and estrogen alone is in fact not birth control, but we need to bring your body back up to what it should be. And you probably are feeling low estrogen symptoms, namely fatigue, mental dullness, low energy, headaches, vaginal dryness, pain, lack of libido. It can even be like gaining weight. There can be a lot of things that can happen in this low estrogen state. The causes of FHA are things that tell the brain not to send out these hormones. If we think back physiologically, these things would happen when there was a famine or your body would be very malnourished. There would be things going on where it was not convinced it could support a pregnancy. Now we see a lot of this from eating disorders, weight loss or calorie restriction, exercise, especially extreme exercise. We will also see it from chronic stress, chronic illness, chronic inflammatory disease, and all of that can have the same impact that the brain decides it's not a good time to be pregnant. And I always say when the brain shuts off the hypothalamus, kind of turns the switch off, it can take years and years of healing to get that better. And how do you heal? This can be from eating more, especially if there's a calorie deficiency, decreasing the amount of exercise or the intensity, sleeping, vitamins, nutrition replacement, making sure there's not any underlying disorders or diseases that need to be helped as well. So when we are looking through these things, this is all really important for us to have a good idea of what is going on. FHA is a diagnosis that comes from exclusion. You can come in and tell me that you are a hardcore marathoner and I am not diagnosing you this without ultrasound and blood work because I've got to rule out the other things that you're not in ovarian failure. You have to rule out that it's not thyroid or pituitary, like prolactin in origin because that can be different. I have to rule out that it's not PCOS because I can't 100% say that 
just because you exercise a lot. But I think that there is definitely an approach here, and we'll do a second video on my approach to healing your body and treating it if you have FHA or you think that you do. But I'm going to go ahead and give you the info that getting on estrogen while you are getting better is extremely, extremely important. As always, there is more information on the As A Woman podcast. Would love it if you would subscribe to the channel again. And you can always follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.